I'm Louie Gomer from East Texas, and uh, what we see in Judge Crabb is absolute proof as to why there must be a National Day of Prayer. When a judge gets through an education such as she's had and remains as ignorant as she is of our history, where we came from, and what it means to take her oath as a judge, as a chief justice, I took the oaths. I took it when I was in the Army. I took it when I came to Congress. And what it means to uphold the Constitution is if you're a district judge, you don't rewrite things. You follow precedent. You follow the law as it is or as the Supreme Court tells you it is. But now we got this activist judge, and when you operate from the vast ignorance that she does, then it becomes dangerous. And I'm sure she, she's got the best uh, degrees on her wall and all, but she is ignorant of our history. And if you go back to the beginning, and I know Mark McIntyre mentioned Benjamin Franklin's speech there in the Constitutional Convention. Nearly five weeks they hadn't accomplished anything. And that's when 80-year-old Benjamin Franklin, smart as ever, stood up and, and went through what he did. We've been here five weeks, accomplished virtually nothing. We got more nose than eyes. And then he said these words, How is it, sir, we have not once thought of applying to the Father of lights to illuminate our understanding? In the beginning contest with Great Britain, we had daily prayer in this room. Now, most of the people like Judge Crabb have probably been taught that he was a deist, meaning that there's some force that created the universe and then just stepped back. His next words were this, Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. And that is followed throughout our history. In the rotunda, there's the, the uh, painting of, of George Washington tendering his resignation. Most people don't know that at the end of that resignation, he had these words, and people were so moved, they had them printed and distributed across the country. And keep in mind, that was an act that nobody had ever done before, and nobody has ever done since. When a revolution is head of the military and then walk away. Never happened before or since. But Washington said, I now make it my earnest prayer, hopefully that doesn't offend Judge Crabb, that God would have you in the state over which you preside in His holy protection. And he goes on and on to entitle a brotherly affection, a love for one another. But he finishes by saying, and finally, that he would most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author, uh, for Judge Crabb, that's Jesus, the divine author of our blessed religion, and without an humble imitation of whose example in these things, we can never hope to be a happy nation. That's how we got started. It is throughout our history. I've got a bill that I filed with all three of the terms I've been in that would require a plaque for people like Judge Craig to read in Statuary Hall so she would know and people would know about the decades of church. Now I had CRS confirm the facts and when I first saw what they sent back I thought, uh-oh, they said there's a difference between Jefferson and Madison. They said, yeah, there's a difference between Jefferson attending church in the Capitol and Madison because Jefferson normally preferred to ride a horse and Madison went in a, a carriage drawn by four horses. Jefferson even brought the Marine Band to play the hymns in the church. So he had a little different idea of the term separation of church and state, which he himself coined. We have a history that is incredible. And, and bless her heart, I'd be interested to know whether Judge Crabb begins each uh, session with a prayer, as most federal judges do, that says, God save this honorable court. That's a prayer. And for her sake, I hope he does.